Hello all of you, I'm Shivangi Agarwal from Actuators Educational Institute. So I'll be to uh, talking about CS2 uh, which is Risk Modeling and Survival Analysis. I'll be discussing uh, the basic course structure um, and what do we provide in our curriculum. Um, what is the ideal duration to complete CS2 and uh, how to go about it. So first of all, uh, this is actually one of the most difficult papers in the entire 13 actuarial papers which you have. Um, the only thing uh, difficult over here is um, the topics are independent of each other. So there are 21 chapters that we have to cover. Now these 21 chapters are taken from earlier papers of CT4 and CT6. So uh, 11 chapters are from CT4 and CT, uh, CT4 out of which 5 uh, chapters relate to stochastic modeling, 6 chapters relate to deterministic models and Six chapters are from CT6 portion, which is uh, high level statistics and four new chapters were added in 2019. These four new chapters which were added were very realistic and um, actually give a very good idea of modeling. We cover machine learning in one of these four chapters. Another thing which is added in the syllabus is our programming. Now there are two examinations of CS2 paper A and paper B. Paper A is 100 marks theory uh, and paper B is again 100 marks uh, practical which is our programming um, 1 hour 45 or 1 hour 50 minutes examination. Uh, so we have to cover these 21 chapters uh, in paper A. We have to cover our programming. First of all, R programming is new to most of the students. So you have already covered this in your CS1. CS1 is the only requirement for CS2. So if you have cleared CS1, then you can definitely opt for CS2. R programming was also covered in CS1, but here in CS2, the level of R programming is a bit higher and we have a practical application of all the 21 chapters in R programming. Next is material reading. So the core material of the institute is very, very important for all the chapters of CS2. So reading the material once is very important. Going through all the questions of the material, uh, all the back questions and the questions in middle of the chapters. Sum solving, which is all the past papers, sums and any new sums which we provide you is again very, very important. And then we have the mock exam. So these are the basic course details that we'll be providing you. Now, since uh, all these chapters which you see over here is not very much interlinked like you might have done in your CM1 or in your CS1, all these chapters are kind, all these portions are kind of independent of each other. So in CS2, you need a little more amount of uh, revision time and that is one of the reasons that students say and call it a difficult paper but when you sit down and study it's very very interesting because all these chapters which you study have a real life application and you can actually build models this is the first paper where you will be starting to build models in our programming as well so let's understand uh, what are the number of um, lectures uh, lecture hours and what is the uh, time preparation required for this paper. So first of all, we will have 160 hours of lecture and this will cover all the concept classes for paper A with basically all the theory concepts. Now it is very very important uh, to get the concept right because in CS2 as I've mentioned we have different models different scenarios so for example if I talk about the CT4 portion uh, the five chapters which covers the stochastic modeling now this stochastic modeling will have different types of models so if you see all the past papers of IFA or IEI you will see that all uh, there, there are no new there are no common sums almost all these sums are uh, new but 
the underlying concept remains the same so if your concept is strong you can build on these models so along with the concept you also need to apply your analytical mindset while solving these questions because uh, after studying cm1 and cs1 this paper is actually where you will be applying more of your analytical skills which you didn't in your cm1 or cs1 papers again since we have paper b r programming very extensively it becomes very important that you study r programming along with paper a every day so we also have our basics classes so approx approximately 7 to 8 basics classes will be there so that you get a very good idea of r programming before moving ahead since we use it exten extensively over here now uh, we also have sums classes because uh, all the sums are uh, are very much new and whatever concept you have studied you need to apply it together in a one particular sum so after you have covered the sums class after you have covered the concept classes and you have covered the paper b classes once you move to the sums class you actually apply all the skills in one particular sum so it's very important that we also have a lot of sums classes sum solving classes wherein you understand how to um, where to start from how to uh, read a new model um, how to build a new model from scratch then uh, when i say that we are building a model it's a very very basic model i'm not saying that we are actually gonna build models uh, high level models over here no this is not there but whatever new scenario or new situation or a new qu question will be given to us that question needs to be dealt in a different way but at the same time we'll be using the same concepts that we have learned right so that is why sum solving classes are very important in cs2 and we actually have a lot of sum solving classes specifically on the weekends for all the students who are in there or who are working as well then we also have mathematical typing classes this is specifically for ifo students since the examinations are happening online so you need to have uh, ms word knowledge as well how to write the answers in ms word we also have doubt classes one to one and group doubt sessions because these doubt sessions are very important as all the students might be having new set of doubts so understanding others doubts is also very very important and most of the doubts and sum solving classes will be on the weekends however all the live classes will also be recorded so you will be getting 100% recorded lectures as well along with these things we also provide you hard copies of the compiler compiler contains all the sums of all the chapters which is segregated section wise we have r programming notes prepared exhaustively paper a concept notes and then summary notes for all the chapters so all these things will be provided to you in the hard copy so now let's come to how much effort we have to put in so every day minimum of 5 to 6 hours is required now if you are working then definitely you might not be able to give so much of time so for you ideally you should give 3 hours every day all the students who are in their college or pass outs who are not working for them ideally it's very very important that you all at least give 5 to 6 hours daily to cs2 out of which it should be divided into two parts so you should at least need to spend 1 to 1.5 hours for your paper b which is r programming and rest you can give four to um maybe five hours to paper a so this is again very very important of uh, why because paper b in cs2 is actually not very easy like you have done in your cs1 r programming here we have lots of functions lots of looping and lots of user defined functions that we create and lots of new functions in all the chapters like time series and markov chains lot of packages we use so when you are habituated of using r programming daily you are able to find out your own errors because finding your own errors in paper b is very very important so that you can understand where you have made any uh, mistake in a particular code correct it and quickly move on to the next question 
we have weekend doubt solving classes uh, specifically for all the working students and students who have um, who uh, who are in colleges and cannot take out time during the weekdays for our doubt solving sessions now for one time finishing of the entire syllabus which covers your paper a concept classes all the sums so, uh, solving paper b uh, assignments and paper b concept classes uh, and one time material reading this entire four things will need you 2 to 2.5 months of time if you every day give 5 to 6 hours and then uh, we have one 1.5 months for revision so you can complete the entire cs2 syllabus in 4 to 4.5 months very easily along with two to three times of revision now uh, when we come to the study schedules so study schedules are prepared by me and i discuss it in my class with all the students depending on students who are working students who are in college or students who are pass outs so i give Give you uh, your personalized study schedule as to how to manage your work and studies or your college and studies so that you can complete the syllabus on time so it will depend on you because uh, your circumstances might be different to that of other students right but yes approximate time duration that you have to give every day is five to six hours this includes your self-study and any video lectures that you have to watch or the live classes which we conduct. Another thing is after the course completion of 2 to 2.5 months, we have mock exams. So we have 6 mock exams for paper A and 6 mock exams for paper B. These mock examinations are checked and provide we provide you personalized feedback on the same so that you can correct yourself during the revision time of 1.5 months. If you have any queries, you can contact us on 8100-598-543 or you can visit our website www.actuatorseducation.com. Now, let's, let me just quickly give you an overview of CS2 as a uh, syllabus and what you will uh, have to study for the coming 4 to 5 months. Um, basically, CS2 syllabus is not very huge because there are only 21 chapters just like any other um, paper in your actuarial journey. If you have given CS1 as your first paper and giving CS2 as your second paper, then yes, definitely there is a jump because CS1 is comparatively shorter and paper B is comparatively easier. But we build entirely on CS1, so having a good knowledge of CS1 is very important. But at the same time, the number of hours you have to put in for the subject increases when you compare it with CS1. If you have appeared for CM1 and CS1, then CS2 is exactly almost similar to number of hours you have put in for CM1, not higher than that. Because in CM1 also we have 27 chapters that we need to cover. CS2 uh, is all about, uh, not all about modeling. We have theory chapters as well. Uh, some of the new chapters will cover some of the theor theoretical aspects and it's very very interesting when we talk about machine learning and its application in our programming or be it stochastic modeling, Markov chain, Markov jumps. So you might have heard your seniors saying that these are very difficult topics but actually these are very very interesting parts of entire CS2. Once you get the hold of the concept you can easily solve a lot of questions in Markov chains or Markov modeling. Uh, Markov jump. Then when we move to the other uh, part of CT4 which is your deterministic model survival models basically. So those survival models are again very easy. The concepts uh, covering concepts might take some time but once you get hold of it you can easily make lots of uh, you know survival models on your own. Again we have some of the theoretical aspects over here. CT6 is mostly full statistical wherein we have time series which is again very interesting. We learn how to project and forecast and predict uh, uh, dim a single dimensional uh, data and again uh, here we will be learning loss distribution reinsurance which, which are comparatively easier and interesting topics. All the new chapters which have been added uh, in the syllabus are again very interesting and have a good real life application. 
I have a particular pattern of taking up the classes. Firstly, I will cover all the CT6 chapters. The reason being that these are comparatively easier. So once you complete all these topics, you can remember it for a longer time. Then we move to the second bit of the CT4 chapters, uh, which is your survival analysis. Then we move to Markov chain and Markov jump, which are very, very interesting. And we have a lot of sum solving classes in for these topics. And lastly, we move to the new chapters. Also, what I do is when I cover one particular chapter of paper A, I straight away move to the paper B class. This is because once you have done your uh, paper A theoretical knowledge is done, your concepts are clear. You and straight away when you apply it and are programming and you visualize uh, the graphs or the models uh, or the functions, it becomes uh, easier for you to retain uh, that for a longer duration. So paper A and paper B are done simultaneously. And I also suggest my students to do the same to study paper A and paper B at the same time so that you are able to uh, understand and retain the concept for a longer duration. All in all, CS2 syllabus is not very vast to cover. You can easily complete it within four to five months along with revision, provided you are consistent with the syllabus. Um, you are uh, giving at least five hours every day. And if some days are off, you're not well or you're not able to give that time, you can definitely cover it up during the weekends. Also, uh, you can reach out to the faculty members, me and uh, there are other teachers as well if you have if you face any doubt or any doubt during your journey CS2 is actually a very interesting subject when you compare it with CS1 because CS1 uh, in CS1, you might not be able to apply a lot of concepts in reality, but here we can. So you don't have to be scared. You don't have to be overwhelmed by what the other students or your seniors are suggesting. CS2 can be easily done within four to five months, provided you are consistent and provided that you want to do that hard work. After all, you have to complete this paper to become an actuary. Thank you.